This is a TaxCast special feature from the Tax Justice Network. For more TaxCasts with news and analysis on tax havens and corruption services, go to www.tackletaxhavens.com. The world of offshore tax havens is full of surprises. Did you know that Delaware is one of the world's largest? And did you know that the City of London's financial district, known as the Square Mile, is the beating heart of the global tax haven network? It sucks up trillions in hoarded cash from around the world, and it operates as a semi-autonomous state within a state. This is the annual Lord Mayor of London parade. Don't confuse him with the Mayor of London, because there are actually two Londons. The Mayor of London presides over the Greater London Municipality, and he's elected by Londoners. But he's got no jurisdiction at all over the Square Mile, the world's biggest financial hub. And neither does Parliament. The Lord Mayor of London's main role is as ambassador for UK financial services. I started to investigate where the money was coming from. Dr Maurice Glassman of London Metropolitan University got interested in the City of London Corporation. So I went to the library of the Corporated City of London to find London's founding charter. And the librarian said, oh no, Dr Glassman, there is no charter. We precede Parliament. We're a city from time immemorial. We've never had to declare our assets because we were outside the sovereignty of Parliament. And I said, well, this is very interesting indeed. Dr Glassman tried to find out how much cash the local government of the Square Mile holds in its accounts. There's three accounts that they hold, each of which gets £250 million a year in interest alone. So... As the chair of the finance committee said, I can't tell you how much we have, Dr Glassman, but I can assure you that it's truly colossal. Next, Dr Glassman wondered how you get elected to the City of London Corporation governing body. There are only around 9,000 residents left in the square mile, and the rest of the voters are actually the financial companies. They've got around 32,000 votes, based not on the principles of citizenship, but on something else. If you had five workers, you got one vote. Ten workers, you got two votes. The maths was quite straightforward. Fifteen workers, three votes. But the workers had no vote. So effectively, what you have is the bosses of firms vote for themselves, and that's called the Common Council of the City of London. Is is completely and utterly dominated purely by the financial interest. So in this part of London, global companies vote in British elections and the City of London has its own special representative in Parliament. The Remembrancer has access to Parliament. The Remembrancer is the only lobbyist that's allowed to enter Parliament, sits behind the Speaker, the only non-parliamentarian who can enter the Chamber. The Remembrancer is the most privileged lobbyist within the British state. There's no academic or political force that hasn't been bought off by the city in the last 800 years. The bailout was the biggest transfer of wealth from poor to rich since the Norman Conquest. It was an astonishing amount of money. We really weren't told. This is the global story. He says if governments keep turning a blind eye to the secrecy jurisdictions operating under their watch, ordinary people will go on paying the price. You've been listening to a TaxCast special feature from the Tax Justice Network. For more TaxCasts, go to www.tackletaxhavens.com. For more information on the Tax Justice Network, go to www.taxjustice.net.